Welcome. Sometimes I come across programming projects that stick in my brain. A few months ago I came across a game framework called 24A2 and I've been wanting to try it out ever since. In this video we'll start writing some JavaScript code for a browser game and see what 24A2 is all about. The framework is intentionally constrained and that's what drew me in. You can easily wrap your head around its features so it's a great starting point if you're interested in learning to code or want to make simple browser games. The tutorial is clear and concise, so that's where we'll start. But first, let's do a very quick tour of some games using the framework. If you click the source code link on the home page, you'll go to the project page on GitHub, and at the bottom you can see a handful of games using the framework. Let's check out Maze Craze to show that you can do more than just have a grid of dots. They augmented it with lines to make mazes. That's pretty cool. And then let's check Space Invaders because, wow. So you can do some very neat things. OK. Back to the tutorial right there. So it looks like we need to make index.html and game.js. And you can see those on the right. It's as if I've planned or done many takes of this video. Hmm. And then we will put game.js in there. And this looks like it creates a couple functions, does a config structure or map or dictionary or object, whatever you want to say. And then we pass config into the instantiation of the game object, and then we run it. Um, let's see what it does. We have a grid. Arrow keys don't do anything yet, and clicking dots does nothing as well. All right, what's next? So it says create is called before the game starts. That's great. While the game's running, update repeatedly called. OK. Sorry, I didn't really use a complete sentence there. So let's set a dot. All right, so we are going to make a player object to track position. And we have a dot. Very nice. Yeah, we definitely want to move. Um, so let's add in mute movement on key press. Save that. Refresh. And we can move around. Very good. Let's do a quick run through of the API, just in case you're curious. Oh, looks like I was already in here. Hey. OK. So you've got color, direction, a game class, and a game config class. The game class has six methods, getting and setting a dot, setting text, getting the current frame count, run and end. All right, that's cool. And <clears throat> the game config is what you pass into the constructor, so let's do a quick run through of that. Create is called once, as we found out already. Default dot color sets the default color for the grid. Ah, you can adjust the frame rate. That frame rate, that's awesome. By default, it's 24. So I guess it clears the grid each frame to the default dot color. You can do something if someone clicks a dot, and then there's a key press handler. Ah, but it's only for the arrow keys. Good to know. And update is repeatedly called. That's where you'll define the main functionality of your game. Cool. So we have movement. Um, but let's, we're not going to make a snake game, but let's remember where we've been. Uh, let's see, another, I'm old school, so let is new to me. Let's just jump in though. All right, let's remember where we've been. And I'm using an object or a dictionary or hash or map or whatever because I don't want to 
store the same position more than once. So if I visit this dot multiple times, I only want one entry. I don't know, I'm just going to start there, and if I need to change it, I can. So let's also do this, because I'm using a, um, a key and a delimiter between x and y, because I want to I want there to not be any ambiguity. Um, so if x is 1 and y is 11, uh, that would, if I didn't have the delimiter, that would be a key of 1, 1, 1. So that would, you know, map to those coordinates. But if the player then visits x11 and y1, that would squash that previous key, and we would lose part of our trail. So you need a delimiter to prevent against that. Okay, now that we're remembering position, that looks okay. We need to draw the trail. So that looks right. And then we'll draw the trail in yellow. Refresh, try it again. It doesn't remember the first dot. Um, <laughs> order of operations. So we were updating the player position and then remembering where we were. That makes sense. That's so typical, isn't it? All right. So if we do that, we'll remember first and then update the position for the black dot. All right, so what I want to do next is drink that glass of wine and then figure out what we're going to do in the next video. So seeing this trail makes me want to animate some ripples. Um, I don't know why, just the first thing that came to mind. you know, as if the player is moving through water. So let's, we'll start thinking about that. We'll do that in the next video. But um, what I mean is as I move this way, I would like ripples to come out the top and bottom. And I don't know what colors or how far or what they would actually do, but just we'll start simple. And then of course, if you change direction, the ripples need to come out this way. So we'll need to track a few things like what direction um, the player was moving away from the dot that's going to start rippling and then we'll of course have to track where we are in the ripple animation frame ripple animation the not frame okay I think that's probably enough for now so thanks for watching and I hope it uh, was entertaining or maybe you want to write some JavaScript code now all right thanks